okay so welcome you all so in last lecture actually we talk about this information processing of data for class 1 to 4 now in this session we are going to talk about class 5 to 8 level that means the level of difficulties will be a bit harder compared to yesterday's class now this particular class is belongs to class 5 okay so in the class you can start with simple kind of this brain teasers like you can show them different shapes and sizes like this star and this cross okay and then you can ask them that which one is bigger now it's simply for us it's simply we can see that the bigger one is this star and the smaller one is this cross now the thing is that how the students will deduce this so you can ask them okay you know the star is bigger but how do you get this now the main motto of this is that they have to put the things in a same scale and the same scale then they can measure that which is larger and which is smaller okay same thing can be done with this lines also now there is random lines now i have made it in a straight lines maybe you can like like this this there may be different kind of lines and then you can ask them the which one is longer okay so then what they will do they have to put it in a same scale or they have to arrange it first like this and then they can comment that which is larger and which is smaller so which is longest one and which is the smallest one like that practically by giving them some sticks or some any other objects and then they have to compare them with each other then they have to understand that okay if we put them in a same scale then it's easier to understand which is larger and which is smaller that means we cannot compare apples with oranges so they have to be in same scale so if the two objects are in same scale then only we can compare them right okay now there is another uh, table we have made so in this table you can ask the students that to take the data of two days like then a shop they are selling some drinks so there are five drinks are there tea coffee masala milk lassi and this salted lassi and sweet lassi and then we can ask them okay now let me know that which drinks is selling higher in which day so then what you have to do they have to make this table so in the table what they they will like drinks here then the two days maybe thursday and friday and then they will check that which day the sales of particular thing is higher now what they have to do they have to compare this individual tables and they'll say okay now by comparing this individual numbers we'll find that thursday the tea was sold highest and this friday by compare all these numbers this sweet lassi has been sold higher so by doing this they will know how to process these data using some tabular format okay so after that they can conclude that okay in thursday the tea was sold highest because the number is here t is the highest number which sold and then from friday they will see that the sweet lassi was sold most okay so by adding maybe i i just give the example with this beverages you can give other examples also you in which day number of classes is higher or which day number of classes is lower then they can compare that and they can give the tabular format and that will be more particular uh, in practical aspect and they will i guess they will like the thing more okay now same thing so what we basically did they will know that okay we put it in a table and in table what was that there was some rows and also there was some columns so using or putting the data in rows and columns it made it easier for understand or deduce that what the value we need so processing the information make it easier using this table process okay or table method okay now at the end what we got the goal we in, uh, we absorb the information that we look at the size and shapes of this star and also we look that what's the length of these lines and also we studied that how much money they made by selling these drinks so basically putting some data in order so what basically we put all the data in order in some manner 
that if we just put the data in order, it's very much easier for us to process it and to understand this, right? Now, in the next case, you can give this type of some sequencing numbers to uh, deduce them. So, okay, what will be the next number? Like this, in the first sequence, first is 1, then there is 3, 6, 10, and then it's 15. So, can anyone... Uh, Tell that what will the next sequence of this number? What will be in the box? Anyone? Okay, so let's understand the process. What we did from first one to three, it will be 21, right? So, how we did this? The thing was that first one to two, uh, three, the difference was two, and then the difference was three then it was four then it was five so that means by getting the sequence that next difference have to be six so six will be added with this 15 and we'll get 21. so can you tell me what will be the number in this box by seeing this sequence 9 3 27 81 243 yeah it will be 243 so what we are doing when multiplying each number what we have by Three, right by multiplying three we're getting this number now can you check the next one so now it looks very easy because only there is four numbers for sorting this largest to smallest but if they were not in sequence then it would be a little bit harder for them to find this sequence or making this in order okay so you can give this type of problems also to them and they will make the sequencing thing and it will increase their intellectual capability also okay now, next, this one, can anyone guess that what will be that this number in this box? This is a little bit harder. Uh, can you tell me the, what's the logic behind this? How we are making this? So multiply by 4 and uh, subtract by 1. Yes, this is the logic. We are multiplying by 4 and subtracting by 1. So the it will be six eight three. So this is the results actually multiplying by four and subtract by one. So this kind of brain teaser also you can give in the class and they will also make it very um, helpful and also when while they will solve it they will also get fun. So that is most important thing while learning the things they are also able to get fun out of it. Okay. Okay. Now there is. Now, okay, now last class also we talk about what is data and what is information. Now, data is basically collection of some facts in paper or computer or somewhere. We are collecting some facts. But the information is when the data is properly explained, that becomes my information. Like if I just write this one, so that can be one data. So we say, what is this? This is a date. But which date, if I say today is 11th August 2021, that means that becomes a information. What is today's date? But individually, this any number, if I say 11082021, that will be only a data. So that needs to be explained properly towards them. So there is a difference between data and information. Because we can have all the data in a table or in a put some uh, manner. But if you don't organize it, for extracting any information that doesn't help so anything have to be organized properly to extract information from that particular data okay now when data is processed it will become information so all the classes what this about it's by processing data we'll get the informations and we can retain information in memory if corresponding data is organized well. So like if I have some numbers, if I say the number is 9495321176, so it will be hard for us to taking graphs all which are the numbers are there. But if I say the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, maybe 8 is there, 7, 8, 9. So if I say this number is 1 to 9, so that is organized properly. And also, it will be easier us for remember this, right? 
so it's easy for remember any organized data rather than any scattered or random data okay now i'm just going to talk about some basics of computers because all the classes are going online and some students are also using computers so let's just have a small look what are what is computer and what is there so in computer there is two portion one is hardware and there is software so the thing what we can touch is basically a hardware so like our cpu the mouse the printer the keyboard the monitor anything what with the speakers anything with the what we can touch will come under this hardware thing the modem maybe now it's part of computer because while using computer we use internet now what is software the software is kind of brain or mind of this computer the thing what we cannot touch is comes under this software so since software is also there is two sections one is operating system and another is application software now operating system is basically the windows what is installed in the computer like in our mobile the android or in the iphone the ios what is installed there those are operating system like in computers also there is linux is there there is mac os is there so all are operating system but the application software is that like our word processing software like microsoft office microsoft word the powerpoint like i am presenting in powerpoint this is also application software the software in which we listen music or watch movies those are application software now that basic difference between application software and this operating system is that if there is any problem in this operating system whole system will not work but if there is any problem in this application software particular application will not work but the entire system rest of that will work okay now there are some differences made between hardware and software say so it's same thing the physical parts are called hardware and the set of instruction is called software then we can touch and feel this hardware thing but we cannot touch this softwares the hardware are physical matters software is developed by writing some instructions so all the in instructions what we give this comes under this software like you can uh, dis uh, discuss in the class so what are basic difference between hardware and softwares and let them know that what the basic computer thing okay and this is also very important thing you can just while using the computer in, uh, classes on your lab this kind of poster should be put in the lab because this bad postures may lead for some health hazards also so how or which way they need to sit and work in a computer table these also need to be demonstrated to them because as their kid they don't know they will just lie or maybe this way or this way they will try to watch what the screen but the proper way need to be explained to them how to sit on a computer okay okay anyway this is uh, one of the important thing in binary system last class also i talk about some binary system but now we are going to see that what's the basic use of this binary system and how we calculate like the number we know is decimal system right so 0 to 9 that means 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so all the numbers are there in decimal system but in binary system only two digits are there 0 and 1 and computer actually understand only this language what is 0 and 1 one one that is one now let us check that if we have a number maybe number is 365 so what this basically mean this basically mean in decimal domain that okay i have a number which is 365 now there is three digits one is 3 then another is 6 and there is 5 now that once we go from right hand side to left hand side we have to multiply each place by 10 so 5 will be here and the 6 is there so 6 into 10 then 3 is there so more multiply with 10 so 3 into 10 into 10 so final number will look like 300 and then 60 then 5 so this is the basic decimal system So what we do we just multiply each numbers with 10 once we go left hand direction right in case of our binary actually what we do 
once we go from right hand to left hand direction we multiply with 2 okay so if i have a number like 10 so basically my number is 0 and 1 we have to multiply with 2 so then the total this 10 will become basically 2 because 1 into 2 plus 0 so it will become how to become 2 and we will understand that how to convert any number to binary to decimal in this section okay now the if we compare the decimal with binary the thing will be once we go from right hand side to left hand side we have to mul multiply 10 using in the decimal system but in binary system we multiply with twos and then it will be 4 then 2 into 2 uh, 2 into 4 will be 8 so like that way we just progress right hand direction now we can see in this example also you see that If it's one, then ten, then hundred. But in case of binary, it will be one, two, and then four, and it will go up. Now let's see how this binary work. Now, if I have two numbers, like if I have to, one number is twelve. Now twelve is in decimal, okay, and I have to convert this twelve in binary. So now how will how we have to do this? The so first way is that. Okay, now the main way is that you just write one, two, and go on doubling all the numbers, eight, sixteen. Now here, once we got this sixteen, which is actually larger than twelve, we put twelve here. Okay, and then the we have eight here. We subtract eight from this twelve, so it will be four. So once we subtracted eight from this number, we write one under this particular eight. Okay. Then the next number is four. We'll find four here. Then we subtract four this four. So there will be zero, and then it will be left zero. So zero zero. So the binary conversion of this twelve will be equal to one one zero zero. Let understand with another example. If we have number maybe seventeen. Okay. And I have to convert this. Into binary. So, what's the way to convert this? The first way is just to write this one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Up to how much you have to write? You have to check that just more than this. So, seventeen is there. Uh, that thirty-two is higher than seventeen. We stop in this thirty-two. Okay. Now the next process is that we have seventeen. And we find out which is the largest number we can subtract from this seventeen. So in this case, sixteen is the largest number which can be subtracted from this seventeen. So now I just subtract sixteen uh, from this seventeen. So one will be there. Okay. Now as we subtracted sixteen from this seventeen, so I will like write one under this sixteen. Okay. Next, what we have? We have one left. Now again, which number we can Subtract from this one, so here one is there. We subtract one, so it will be zero. Now, as we subtracted one from this number, I will write one just below this one, and all the rest of this number I will write zero. So that will become my binary representation of seventeen. So if we represent this decimal seventeen in binary, it will be one zero 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 one in binary. So this is how we convert any number from decimal to binary, and I guess this is one of the easiest way to do this. Okay, same thing has been has been also shown here. Let's see. If we just let one is there, one zero zero. So 
earlier 12 also we got the result for this 1100 so this 8 is there 8 into 1 will be 8 then 8 into 4 will be 4 so 8 plus 4 will be 12 so we have just converted this 12 in binary structure Now, this is another way to understand the method. Just what we did, just take the numbers. This is 1 dot, 2 dot, 4 dot. This is going on doubling each time. And then the number what we have, okay, we just put those numbers. I'm having some issue with my slides. Okay. Now, actually, what is in this method? In this method, what they show? They show that they put some cards and make the dots. So, what are dots? They are going to double these dots once they go from right to left hand side. And when you see the dot, so that dot will count. And if you can, if you cannot see the dot, will not count those dots. So by that way also, we can represent any binary number using this. Like here, we can only see if you want to represent this 6. So what we'll see? 2 plus 4. That is, we can see 6. If the dots are add up, they will become 6. So now we can write also 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. That means 6 has been represented in binary form. Same way, if you want to go for in other numbers also, those numbers which will add up, those dots are actually going to add up, make this binary, uh, the decimal sequence, those we can show and that number or the, the thing what we can see will be represented as 1 and the black one will be represented as 0. Okay. So they will, they will see, just add this number and 6 will be appearing here. Same goes with the 9. Same way, this is 1 and there is 8. So, my number will be 1, 0, 0, 1. Like this way also, we can represent this binary sequence. Okay. Now, now as we know how to write this binary sequence, let's have some more examples also and in the class also you can give this type of problems like give some decimal number and with this some cards they will just make which are the numbers or which are the cards just add up and make this number five or that particular decimal number and they can also they do it by themselves Okay, there is also another some representation of this. 2 will be represented 0, 1, then 0, 0, 0, then 10 will represent as 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 14 will be represented as 1, 1, 1, 0. Like, let's take 14. How to represent this 14 in binary form? Simple way, what we did earlier 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Now we stop at 16 because 14 is smaller than 16. Now, what you have to do? We have 14 and we subtract 8 from this 14. So we left with 6. So as we subtracted 8, we'll write 1. And then we left with 6. Okay. Now from 6, we can subtract this 4. So we left with 2. So as we subtracted 4, we'll write 1 here. Then again, this 2 will be subtracted from this 2. 0. Then again, I will write 1. Then 0, so 0. So this number actually has been represented here right so this type of examples also you can give in the classes now actually in summary what we just did we just learned to know that the numbers what is using in 0 to 9 are in base 10 and computer stores all the numbers or what they only understand this binary sequences so we need to learn how to convert this numbers decimal numbers in binary sequence using just two variables one is zero and one is one right and also 
Why are these also? We can have our normal mathematical operations also, like adding, subtraction, multiplication. All can be done using binary domain also. Okay. Okay. Now in the next phase, information processing. This is for class six, and just we have a little bit revision of the previous section. What did in last class? So what is raw data? Raw data means facts and figures. right so data can be processed and then they can be organized they can be compressed like in our we seen that in previous uh, class the toys we just compress in a single box so that can be done using this or using uh, in the data right and also this processing can lead to some information because after processing we will will be in a higher position to get what are this data means okay and now let's go for some shorting things like if you in the class you can give some pictures on this kind of bottles glass tank and jar and then ask them short them short these glass uh, items why are their size so as in the photo they will look similar but in their mind they can, they know that okay the tank size will be bigger the glass will be smaller size bottle will be in somewhere and the jar will be little bit bigger so by using their common sense they can short this type in this way this storage capacity okay now how we approximated the size of each container because using the size so this size was our data and we shorted the data from smallest to largest container okay so this is very important thing which is the main attribute of this particular system we have to extract from them okay so if the data is the variation is made of the size that means we have to sort out this in base of size if it is uh, based on some numbers then we have to make sure that we are sorting using the smallest to highest number so that information also then to understand okay now let's see we have a student of uh, student stand student in a class and then the teachers have been shorted by using their surnames so we can see there they are alphabetically they have been arranged okay so by this way also you can give some names in the classes and tell the students okay now you make the shorted list based on the alphabets and they will do this way okay by alphabetically by the surname a is in the first and b second like this way they will short it and also they will find that there will be three col uh, columns one is for the roll number one for the surname and will for my uh, for the names okay so by doing this they will also learn how to organize the names by alph alphabetically in some table now give them this problem that in this class now two new students join and one student is maybe abhay's twin brother so vijay and another is the balram's cousin joined there who is whose name is jayram now we have to make sure that they will be in same way sorted in this list now they will uh, find this problematic because they will find that two son names are repeating right so you will find that this Son name Balram is uh, Bawkar is there, and this again, the Chaudhary is again there. So how they are going to short this? Now the first thing is that first we'll try to short this using their son name. Okay, but if it's not possible, then what we'll do? We'll try to short it via their first name. So that idea they have to. generate because we have two columns one is for the son name one is one is for the names now if we cannot solve the problem in the first column then we have to check for the next attribute what is present in this data okay so by doing this they can also now solve this because after b b is there but here the a then in the name which alphabet is coming first that will be put in the first order and then 
via that also they can reassign their roll numbers also in this table okay now so what we learn in this section we actually learn that the chart with columns and row call table so they will know how the table is made and what is there there will be some rows there will be some columns in the columns there have to be some names okay and then how we shorted this the first way we shorted this using this alphabetical order in their surname so first we shorted this using this alphabetical orders and then if there is any issue comes that means the two person is same surnames is there then we go for the next column so next column is the name is there and then in name we'll check that which name is having alphabet and then we just sort by that alphabetically order now if we can also check with some other process also that if the na sun name is same the name is also same then we have to add another column on that column you can put the age now by the age also they can also arrange via that uh, that age order that means the uh, age is which is younger that will become in first place and those little bit uh, older they will be in the next section where this way also they can short all these uh, tables using uh, all the data is using a table okay okay now now the next is that we are going to talk about this shorting algorithms now if you have some numbers or some balls so how they will just short just see that if you have a if you have you can also give in the class that different balls having different numbers and tell them okay now you just make sure all the numbers in lower the number lower to higher like that there is number is 2 is there then 3 is there so first 2 should come then 3 should come then this 6 should come then this 9 should come and then 13 then 15 so this shorting they have to done so now what is the way we do this shorting so the first way of shorting algorithm is that you take first two of these balls okay now you check that which is smallest the one which is smallest you put in the left direction and then which is little bit uh, larger number then you put in the right hand section then again we repeat the next step the next step first has been already done now we go with the second and third now between these two we compare this which is smaller which is higher so the thing which is smaller again will come in my left hand side which is larger that will come in my right hand side so this way the process will be continuing from for each and every ball will just go from left hand direction to right hand direction and this is what we are doing we are shorting basically we are swapping the balls from one and each other process so once we complete this again first swap will be completed and again we will start for the next swapping by this way once complete each and every row will finally reach to this section that all these numbers will be shorted in such a way that 2 3 6 9 13 and 15 will be there and basically inside our computer this method has been used for shorting of any numbers from lower to higher direction okay now what we just learned we learned that shorting involves the comparison of two entities at a time we call it is an exchange step so what we are doing we are exchanging the thing which is smaller we are putting in my left hand side the thing which is larger i am putting in my right hand side so this swap thing is there and swapping we are shorting all these numbers and also you can just give them example that if this shorting was not done how difficult it would be in a dictionary to find any words okay so what basically shorting does shorting helps us organize the data by and then by doing this it will save us some very crucial times okay 
ओके ओके नाउ अगेन वी गो टू आवर बेसिक डेसिमल टू बाइनरी सेक्शन सो दिस थिंग हैज बीन ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दैट व्हाट इज द बेसिक डिफरेंस इन डेसिमल एंड बाइनरी सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू कवर दिस एंड आल्सो वी कैन सॉल्व दिस थिंग हाउ टू एनी नंबर फ्रॉम बाइनरी टू डेसिमल सो दिस थिंग हैज नॉट बीन कवर्ड दैट how to convert any number from binary uh, binary to decimal right so here if we have a number like 000100 now how to convert this back to my binary or decimal scale so this thing is very simple again we have to write all the numbers what we are writing one and make it double 2 4 8 16 32 and then place all the zeros or the binary digit top of them like 0 0 0 and those number belongs to 1 we we'll just take that number and add them okay like for this case only one was there in top of this four so my binary representation of this uh, two in decimal will be four for this case it will be again 1 2 4 8 16 32 and now Zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Now we just add them, so this will be cancelled, 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 cancelled. Now this is only remaining, so sixteen plus four will be twenty. So by this way also we can convert any number from binary to decimal domain. Okay. Now what is bit? Now bit is basically binary digit. The thing what we have just solved is all our bits, right? In zero one one zero, what we did, all are my bits. And in computer, these are very important because in computer language, what we do, they are actually represent in bit. So computer strength now it is we use sixty four bit computer. Earlier we used to use the thirty two bit computer. and then before that there is 8 bit computer so what actually they mean actually they mean that in this computer there is a memory or structure to hold at a time that number of bit like in case of this example if i just say there is 5 so in 5 bit computer there is only 5 memory storage each line that can hold all these numbers so maximum number that can hold is 1 1 1 1 1 so that is the highest number which can be hold in a 5 bit computer now how we type or computer the computer stores this basically each and every alphabets they represents in different set of these bits so maybe a is been represented is 0 1 0 0 0 so that will be Fix for my A, for B there will be maybe one, one zero zero zero. So that will be fixed for my particular B. But each and every one will assume it different way. So that will be a problem because one company is assume that A is like this way. Maybe other company will assume A is A in other way. So that's why this ASCII thinking. ASCII means American Standard Code. for information exchange so they actually what they do in 1960 they all sit together and they make a particular set of structure which will be made for this different kind of alphabets like it was the main structure what they made so they made sure that capital a will be represented with 0 1 One zero 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 one. So that has been fixed for 
everyone so each and every computer or every companies they use these structures for that the smaller smaller case a they represent with s key 097 actually 097 represent with the binary bit 0110001 so by this way each and every alpha alphabets has been described in ascii codes so what actually we found that we found that the pattern will in binary sequencing is can be stored data in our computer with having particular set of instruction or particular sets of sequence which has been made by our some ascii codes and that is common for each and every software or each and every companies right they made with this structure okay now let's move to the morse code and morse code is little tougher side so this has been made for class 6 so you can explain that in earlier case how the information was supposed to transfer from one to another end so basically what you used to do some person who is used to go run from one place to another place right but next what came then they develop some visual light of thing right from one and they will put some light and by this light they will deduce that other end okay so if this light is there i will understand this is happening and then we got this telegraph so telegraph was a very good invention what was invented in 1937 why are tele after invention of telegraph this communication system became very useful or very not useful it very actually um, what is it the word very uh, very good actually so we can then after that we can transfer large number of data or very information from one place to another place without any noise or losing any data right so what actually happening in the telegraph in telegraph so they assign different alphabets using some different dots and da so basically there is dit and da so this dots and dash has been represented for my morse code like a has been represented by dot dash b has been da dot 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 c has been represented by da that mean dash dot dash dot so that way we represented this entire alphabet system and also the numbers then once we want to transfer data from one end to another end we just put this dots and dash sounds and then in other end they will get this sounds which is dot maybe da dot da so they after that they will decode this numbers and they will understand what was the message and then also how this dots and dash has been created they made this tree and now someone can ask that okay why e has been denoted only single dot and y has been denoted by dash dot dash dash so it's a little bit big actually what they did in 19 uh, in 1837 the people sat together and they checked the newspapers which alphabets are used very often those alphabets has been used very often those alphabets are has been assigned very small sets of instruction like e has been used very often that's why for using e it was only dot has been assigned and how they used to transfer this so this is the way they used to transfer this so for a single dot the unit time will be one so they will just mean dot for a dash that means they will transfer at a unit of three time maybe we assume there is a beep sound for one second will be dot and the beep sound beep sound is for uh, three second like p that will be my dash by this way p p p p by this way they will actually transferring all the data from one end to another end now if we have to give some spacing from one letter to another letter they will give one unit frame of time okay so one unit time there will be spacing will be there then we will understand okay my first word has been complete first letter has been completed then the next letter what is going to come is my next letter then again if we have to give some spacing between two letters then there was three unit of time of delay 
so this delay will understand that okay the delay is happening that means my next letter is coming the next case if we have to transfer the words so if there is seven unit time of spacing is there after first letter what we got that will be spacing between two words so by this way they have defined that how to transfer morse code from one end to another end. and also this morse code for this sos that means the emergency symbol it was dot 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 then dash for three dash and then again dot 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 and this has been still now used in our communications okay now these are some also different morse codes which are uh, defined here the like hello can be defined like this and morse code itself can be defined by this way so what basically can be done in the class that in class you can give them this short of instruction what is there like this instruction you can hand over to them and then after that uh, you can give them some words and they have to make that particular word using this morse code so if the word is maybe um, hello so they will take h from this the h is four dot and then there will be e there will be give some space and there will be single dot and there will be l will be there so l is basically dot dash dot dot they will write dot dash dot dot and then again there will be l dot dash dot dot and there will be o so dash 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 so that you will do in the class and by this way they will also learn that morse code how to write in morse code basically okay okay now this compression has been covered in earlier uh, session also for the 1 to 4 version but now we are also going to start how to compress it for the class 7 base okay now what was basically compression compression was as we have limited space we have to fit all the data or all the objects in the same place we just put everything in a compressed manner in a small space and when we need the data we will again just take it out from and basically what we decompress all the data and it will come back to the original place so compression doesn't mean that we lose any impression on information which will only mean that after compressing we will need lesser space okay so why this compression is basically needed it is needed because in computer is lots of data are there so all the data they need storage space but the storage space is limited that's why we need to compress data but again you have to remember that once we compress the data we should not lose any kind of information this is the main motto of this compression now just take one rhyme and or poem then we can also uh, give in the class that okay you have this poem with you and you have to compress it as much as possible you can do now what we can see there in this poem the peter patter ranges t t e r these are again repetitive the peter patter is repetitive first line we also write peter and then the second word is patter but in the patter word this t t e r has been repeated from my first word in the second line the entire first line has been repeated and also in this fourth line and fifth line entire first and second line has been repeated okay so now can we compress it such a way that we need less amount of less number of space so this will what we can do we can point out that the section which has been repeated so this has been repeated so this will again just come here and the entire thing what is here will just come here and the entire second row thing we can just write that that will just come here okay so by this way we can skip all these sections and make the arrow instructions so these are the instructions we can give that okay what will going to happen this thing will repeat in this place and while reorganizing data we can write that it decompress manner so like this if we have this thing in compressed manner now can you tell me that what should be there in this first block so here we see that e has been shown in this place right so that means e will come 
okay now in this case this has been repeated that means r will come here then again this has been referring to my this block that means e will come here okay then this o has been referring to this place so o will come here and again the entire block has been referred in this place and same thing has been referred this place so this thing will repeat here and repeat here then this old thing has been referred to this place so now this old will come here okay so i guess you got the point right we can repeat all this thing and finally we can get this entire poem decompress or retrieve back like in this class also you can give this type of compressed or coded thing to the students and students will decompress the total poem and they will just give the poem written back like this only okay so this type of practice also you can do in the class so again what we see that as we compress the data it doesn't mean that it lost any kind of its information okay so i also by compressing it is take very less amount of space to save the data in my computer okay so now basically while it use it can be used for anywhere like completely saving any kind of uh, images or any kind of data in the computer and how it will help it will help because the data while we, we have to transfer from one computer to another computer if we transfer any compressed data so it will be easier and faster to transfer from one end to another end and in some cases we have been seen that after compressing the total compressed amount will become one seventh of the original image even in case of fax in fax what happened they compress such a way that one seventh of the original size has been compressed and they will just transfer from one point to another point even in case of photographs it has been seen that over 100 times of compression can be achieved because if a photo is such a way that this section is been repetitive some image or section has been repeated so they will just transfer one section and they will say that okay this will repeat in entire section for 100 times or 200 times so by that way we'll see that the entire thing will be compressed and it will be easier to transfer from one way to another way now in class also you can show them the some video you can make in the class and first you can show what is the size so the size can be seen like it's a, a video and we can seeing in the vlc that what's the size and after compression how the size become so you can use any online compressor that is upload it and it will compress and you can download it by uh, doing this in the class also they will also know understand that okay the compression has been done and it's very much compressed now it will need, need very small amount of space but you can play the video also and you can show them that okay but the quality of the video have not been degraded that means the compression has been achieved very uh good way okay now this is also another kind of puzzle what is been shown here that this thing we have to write that what will be in this box now same way we see that this thing will repeat here so again this will be my repeating thing after compression we will find that that will be banana right so three consecutive a is coming here then n is again it will come in the loop then a will again come in the loop so it will become banana so this type of small small activities also we can give in the class to grasp the main compression technique for this students okay so in summarize what we can do the main thing what we have to uh, emphasize that by compressing we are not losing any data we are helping them to saving time of transmission also the space the space crunch is there everywhere so that have to be compressed and for saving the space we can compress any kind of data now 
this is an introduction of cryptography so what is basically cryptography cryptography is that if we have any information and then that information we want to make it secret that secret thing some message is there that message have to be read in some other way then we'll transfer from one end to another end and that data will again retrieve it back by using that particular set of instructions right so again so that can be shared in different way also like in this picture there is lots of information is there and can you find that six uh, hidden words in this picture anyone can find that six hidden words okay maybe they can find that there is r is there the o is there so this type of hidden words they may a is there <laughs> n o n o or o r yes mm. the more numbers are there more alphabets are there pages uh, pages yes novel n o v e l novel yes so like way by having this image if you transfer from one person to another person maybe in between the person who is there they will not understand that what is there but the person is meant to be they can understand this image so this kind of secret quotes can be made for make any cryptography okay now why we need because the man in middle they can know what the hidden information so escape from this we can have this cryptography now let's check that how to make any data secret the the best way is that we can juggle with the numbers right in this space yeah now in this section what we basically did we just wrote first our a to z all the alphabets and then we shifted this c by two alphabets so that means this a and b will just come here now if i want to transfer in data maybe my data is high now in place of h and i i will find there is j and k so if i transfer this j and k the man in middle they will not understand what is the data but the person the data is reaching as he know what is my way to cryptography how he made the data from high to jk they can again decipher this number and they will make okay as this i write jk so j means it belongs to h k means it belongs to i so i the my actual data was high okay so this way you can decipher all the data now in the class what can be done in the class you can give the students all these uh, different alphabets and make just let them make this cryptography technique that okay my i i have shown my class that the number what we did we just shifted by two numbers now you just do by yourself and shift by any number maybe they can do by four numbers or three numbers or five numbers or they can implement by or higher method also maybe first number will be shifted by two second will be shifted by four by they mean they can do any kind of this cipher techniques by this way they will understand that how to decipher any number and also how to make first of all how to cipher this number and then how to decipher this number and this is the way what we just talk now this was on the caesar cipher technique actually uh, julian caesar used to use this type of cipher technique to make data safe from other informers okay anyway uh, thank you for now so if any question is there you can just ask me now so in the uh, this class main motto was that give students some space to understand what is the real world problem and how to solve them 
like in first section what we did we give some uh, different length of lines and just told them to okay which is shorter and which is the longest one so by for doing this they have to bring it in a same scale so the main motto was that okay for making this comparison you have to be in the same scale so that they will understand from that section okay and then in other section where we made that we have to understand that which beverage was selling higher in which day for arranging those numbers they what they need they have to make some tables in this table they have to write all the name of the beverages here and then there will be maybe day wednesday thursday which day sunday maybe two days is there and then after that they have to compare the number within this particular day only and then only they can understand that okay which is highest selling beverage and which is the lowest selling beverage for particular same day in the next case if we made the tabulation on also and then the new students came which uh, which two students are having first we arrange it within by surnames now the surnames are also common now if the surname is common now what to do how to arrange them and make the roll numbers then one option was closed because surname is same then they have to look for other options so make them prepare to look that for other options are also there to make this so now they are looking for the names and on the names which are alphabet were like a b that like that way they can also sort so these also the uh, these also give they give them the idea that okay the search is not ends here if we stuck we have to look for the next section also okay now after that once you make this uh, name then we went for this binary thing so what was in my binary thing binary things we learned that how to convert in numbers from decimal to binary and binary to decimal so the easiest way to convert any number to binary to decimal uh, decimal to binary was so first write this 1 2 3 4 1 2 4 8 that means make it double okay up to how much the number is maybe 37 so you have to more at least you have to write 64 then you take the highest number what we can subtract from this number so here is 32 the subtract 32 for this number so it will be 5 so then below this 32 there will be 1 and then check that which is the highest number in this sequence we can subtract from 5 so this is 4 then again 5 minus 4 is 1 as we subtracted 4 from this number this will be 1 so in between all will be 0 then again so i have left with 1 the number what we can subtract from this 1 is 1 so i like 1 1 minus 1 is 0 and this under 2 will be 0 so this 100101 will be representation binary representation of my decimal 37 like this way we can also give some numbers to the class and they will also do vice versa okay and then in next section we go in for this uh, cryptography so in cryptography actually uh, what we can do you can also give the, let them the students to develop their own cryptographic technique and decipher it by their own also maybe they can give in the two sets of students so one will decipher one will decipher the code and another will decipher the code using the set of instruction okay and also i just uh, skip the morse code so what we did in morse code we came to know that the numbers alphabets can be transfer using dots and dashes so you can give in the class some set of this morse code and then you can give some one uh, line of instruction that any word or any line they have to convert this line alphabet or this word or the line in morse code okay by doing this they will also understand that how to do morse code and how to decipher back also maybe there is some uh, dots on dashes images are there uh, data is there and that from there also how to decipher or get back the actual data okay okay anyway uh, thank you for thank you all and if any questions is there i can i will be happy to answer participants any questions no sir
thank you dr bhumik thank you for your uh, lecture yeah thank you sir and uh, participants uh, this is the last session of sir if you have still have some queries you can say sir is there